All right, what's up everyone? Today we're talking about vortex trapping to uh, increase the efficiency of flight in insects and in particular the flying fruit flies. So before we go any further, make sure to check out the instruments we make here at Premier Aerodynamics to make your experiments and CFD better. Check out our courses to make you a better aerodynamicist and check out the International Aerodynamics Conference, which is a conference we put on every year for aerodynamicists. Okay, so let's get into it. The paper we're going to be looking at is called Vortex Trapping Recaptures Energy in Fruit Flying Fruit Flies. And the link, um, well, you can find it online quite easily, it's open access. So, flapping flight is one of the most costly forms of locomotion in animals. To limit energetic expenditures, flying insects thus developed multiple strategies. So, each insect, or not each insect, but different categories of insects have different ways of flying. And one that we'll be looking at today is for flying fruit flies, which also cover a few other insects, for example, uh, butterflies. So an effective mechanism to reduce flight power expenditures is the harvesting of kinetic energy from motion of the surrounding air. So why is that um, efficient? And the main reason is because as these insects are flapping, there's obviously going to be some losses that are going to occur. So as they flap along, there might be some vortices shed or, or whatever. So they, that would usually be effectively dead energy, just you're losing that energy to the flow. So by using that those vortices or whatever else you have, you can then recapture some of the energy and make your lift more efficient. So that's what they're looking at today. We here show an unusual mechanism of energy harvesting in an insect that recaptures the rotational energy of air vortices. The wing surface momentarily traps the vortex and transfers its kinetic energy to the wing within less than a millisecond. So that's not a lot of time, but um, they flap at like 115 hertz. So it's actually quite a, a um, large portion of the flapping uh, cycle. So an increase in flight efficiency improves flight during aversion uh, maneuvering in response to predation and long distance migration, and thus factors that determine the worldwide abundance and distribution of insect populations. So what they're saying here is, the more efficient that you can produce flight, the further you can go and the less you're going to be eaten by other animals. So then you can um, populate other regions of the world and um, travel there. So that's determining a large uh, determining factor of whether you're gonna find a certain insect in that region of the world or not, how efficient they are at flying. So during wing flapping of insects, the energy of propulsion stems from the contraction of flight muscles. The majority of muscle energy during flight appears as kinetic energy in the surrounding air, but part of it is also stored as elastic potential energy in the muscle, muscle tissue, as elastic deformations of the thorax and wings, and as kinetic energy in the movement of wings. So this is a really interesting point because it's one thing that we haven't um, really got our heads around, or it's, they're just starting to do that now. So up until now, when we were making MAB, so micro uh, air vehicles, the um, little insect-like uh, human-made vehicles. We kind of assumed that the, or we just made the wings of these vehicles rigid. Now that's not really what happens in real life. In real life, these insects, these wings can actually um, bend a little bit. And the reason why they do that is because it helps them recapture the energy a little bit more as we get into later on. So fly wings, for example, Elastically recycle only 80 to 90 percent of the deformation energy during wing flapping, making flap flight less efficient. It's still pretty good though. I mean, it's better than MAVs. Birds in flock, for example, take advantage of flight formations using vortices shed from the wing tips of the heading animals, and trout save muscle power by exploiting rotational energy from vortices generated by bodies upstream. So that's both true. And I was also at the um, at like a a park the other day. And it was a lake and some ducks, and I just saw that they were swimming in formation in like the V shape as well. And that's because I guess they had um, that vorticity from the lead animal that they could use to um, make their swimming more efficient. So it happens in a lot of different uh, situations. And then they go on to discuss some other animals. For example, vortices at the wing may enhance the production of locomotive forces in flight. Elevated leading edge suction in birds, bats, and insects is generated by the wing's leading edge vortex that boosts lift production. So what this means is um, as you flap the wing, this leading edge vortex occurs and that is a source of low pressure. So that aids um, lift dramatically. 
and animals such as some birds, some bats, and some insects have these. The cyclic changes in wing flapping direction within the stroke cycle, however, force insects to per periodically shed these vortices into the wake. So what that means is you do create these vortices, but then after a little while, they're going into the wake and you lose that energy. Thus, at each stroke reversal, a large amount of kinetic energy and thus muscle power is wasted, lowering propulsion efficiency owing to energy conservation laws. So dragonfly hind wings, for example, utilize energy-rich vortex flow shed from the forewings that increase aerodynamic efficiency, and butterfly wings lower the kinetic energy of stopping vortices by slicing through it. So first of all, on the dragonflies, what this means is the dragonflies have their, their front wings and their rear wings, and the wake that's coming off the front wings impacts the, the rear wings, but they've evolved to take advantage of this wake to actually recapture energy and make their flight more efficient. Onto the butterflies, butterflies have what's called a clap and fling um, flight. So we all know like what a butterfly is with the wings. And as the wings come up to the top, they clap together. And as they do that, there are vortices on the outside of the wings. As they peel their wings back to flap down, these vortices um, partly go in, but also new vorticity gets created. And that um, creates these low pressure regions and increases their lift. So they take advantage of these leading edge vortices and the energy that would otherwise be lost to the flow to increase their efficiency in flight. So that's called clap and fling, which I think um, fruit flies also have. We'll get to that in a second. This study identifies that the 1.3 milligram fruit fly harvests energy from trapping vortices during clap and fling wing kinematics, at which the flapping wings physically touch and cordwise bend during the dorsal stroke reversal. So yeah, they have clap and fling motion as well. So there are a subset of insects that do take advantage of this, this motion. Experiments previously showed that clap and fling kinematics alters vortex development and also lowers energetic costs for lift production per unit flight muscle mass compared to flight without clap and fling kinematics. In freely flying fruit flies, high speed video recordings show that full and partial dorsal wing wing contact occurs at 33% of the 144 tested wing strokes. So, in other words, about a third of the time they do have this clap and fling um, model where the wings do actually hit together. So then they go on and they just say, figure 1b shows uh, wing orientation in 4 out of 17 measured times during the dorsal rotation phase of a tethered fruit fly. So let's go to figure 1, where is that? 1b, okay. So all this is showing is just a fruit fly with a laser going through it and it's showing this that their wings are hitting as they clap and then they fling, so they peel their wings down and they continue the motion. But the image suggests that clap and fling wing motion in fruit flies lasts approximately one millisecond or 15% of the 150 hertz stroke. So 15% of the time of the that cycle, they um, have this motion occurring. So the wings in fruit flies have a small positive camber so that's, this is what we are talking about before. I have a small positive cam at the beginning of the downstroke. So as we were saying, the MAVs, we usually say that the wings are rigid. But in reality, a lot of insects, they have their wings, they can bend them. And the reason why is because the positive camber contributes to the production at the initial phase of the downstroke because it increases the wings angle of attack and thus fluid momentum. So they can um, flex their wings and make the, their flight more, um, more efficient. And then they go on and say, so figure two shows the evolution of leading and trailing edge vortices during the dorsal stroke reversal in five equally spaced out of 17 moments sampled at 10 kilohertz. So what this figure shows is, as I was just saying before, you have their wings, which do curve. And as they come together, you have leading edge vortices on the outside. So you have ones at the top and ones at the bottom of the wings, but they're on the outside in the clap and they're opposite signs. As the wings peel apart, vorticity or vortices occur um, on the leading edges. And then as the wing continue to peel apart, these vortices grow um, and then 
you get a lot more lift. And then the same cycle occurs again and again every time. So at wing clap, both, for, both vortices have gained maximum strength but remain attached at the ventral wing surface, so the outside of it, in other words. And then they go on and just conclude saying that um, throughout wing peel motion, the leading edge vortex does not separate from the wing as reported for robotics and computer simulation, computer simulation models. So as we're saying, the because the MAV and robot wings are rigid, this vorticity cannot really be captured that well. So it usually just gets imparted into the rest of the flow and goes downstream and uh, makes flight less efficient. That's not the case in insects. Instead, in insects, it remains close to the wing's ventral surface and closely travels, consequently travels downstream from the leaning edge towards the trailing wing edge. The ability of fruit fly wings to trap the leading edge vortex from the upstroke results from the combined effect of cordwise wing bending during peel and upward heaving motion. The two wing surfaces effectively separate left and right leading edge vortices, avoiding the, that both vortices cancel each other out onto the opposite side. So that's a very important uh, point to make. So because, as I just mentioned before, these vortices that are forming are of the opposite sign, if they're very close to each other, they can annihilate each other because they can cancel each other out. That means that you don't have these vortices anymore to um, take advantage of. So by keeping them slightly further apart, you can keep them intact and they don't cancel each other out. And you can then um, use the kinetic energy for using later to produce lift. For comparison, in rigid wings of robotic drosophila, drosophila which are fruit flies or flies, Wing flapping models, leading edge vortices are shed during the fling phase into the opening cleft between both wings. That forces vortex extension according to the Kelvin's law rather than energy recycling. So what they're saying is that our wings that we've designed are not nearly as um, precise and accurate so that these vortices that are produced aren't uh, are cancelling each other out and aren't giving as much lift as what they could be as they do in insects. So that's the end of the paper. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to check out the Atmosphere Fork and our other instruments. We make PIB systems and traversing systems, as well as a lot of others. So check them out. Check out our courses to make you a better aerodynamicist. And check out the International Aerodynamic Conference, which is for all aerodynamicists to meet up and talk about what they're doing. So peace out.